Greetings, my name is Bruce Adelson. I'm an attorney in the Washington DC area and a former US Department of Justice senior trial attorney in the Civil Rights Division. I'm coming to you on behalf of Bromberg and Associates. So tonight as we begin our next video series, uh, I wanted to talk about the healthcare civil rights requirements in the newly revised section 1557 of the Affordable Care Act. And I wanted to connect that with a happy birthday to the Americans with Disabilities Act, 30 years old right now. So the ADA, one of the most comprehensive, broadest civil rights laws enacted in the history of the United States, is connected to a little bit of what I want to talk about tonight. And that is the requirements in the Affordable Care Act for effective communications with people with disabilities. One of the big surprises that doesn't get talked about a lot is that the current the new rules, the revised rules, retain one of the most sweeping increases in rights to people with communication disabilities. When they were first enacted in 2016, these changes gave people with communication disabilities, people who are deaf, hard of hearing, blind, or low vision, increased rights to what are called effective communication with their healthcare providers. So what that basically means is that if I have a communication disability, if I'm deaf, for example, and can communicate by American Sign Language, for the most part, a healthcare provider must agree and provide me with my desired, effective, preferred form of communication, which would be an American Sign Language interpreter, either through video remote interpreting or somebody in person in the room with me. So that's something that really hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but I wanted to just flat out mention because of the confluence with the ADA's birthday, that these effective communication requirements are the same now as when they were first enacted in 2016. So the new rules don't change them, but I think it's another opportunity for healthcare providers and others to be educated about what these requirements do. So they're basically called the primary consideration rule. Remember that if you're working with, speaking with, interacting with someone with a communication disability, for the most part, that person's communication preference is the one that you must use. So we're gonna be talking a lot more about the proposed rules and what they say, what they have, or what they don't have. But for now, I wanted to leave you with this a uh, bit about the effective communication requirements and say another happy birthday and give a shout out to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Well, thank you very much for your time. I look forward to speaking with you again. Be safe, be well. I look forward to talking to you our next time. Thank you, bye-bye.